Hi lovely viewers, it's me again your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Hello, good morning. Good morning, busy. Good morning, my son. Good morning, sir. Good. My name is Chela. Good morning, Mr. Tuguta. Please go ahead with your question or contribution. Yeah. Uh, 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 then you should stay a little the news. Indeed, indeed. Then road yeah. shedding, road shedding, I'm near you, but I didn't have one. Start, uh, this year, it's like, last year there was power, so you should have seen online. <laughs> indeed. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, oh, for me, first of all, uh, uh, Sean Temple times uh, as a leader, as a leader that was vying for a certain office, like presidents and stuff like that, when I would follow your Facebook page, your language for a leader like you would say, it, 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 you know, you would refer to, you know, to a human being, to a man, you know, things like that. Uh, so even when you are speaking things that would have sense, at times as, as citizens that are looking, so okay, this guy may make sense, but when he speaks on his Facebook page, it differs from... Uh, and so you can say that is it just the bitterness or is it just the what? And also for me, when you see a person that is part of an alliance with uh, there was a European alliance, I remember uh, before European reform government, that alliance left. Now the Uka alliance you left, and you are no longer in the Uka alliance. So your what is your your in terms of your credibility? consistence and what you believe in and stand for, you are kind of a lost, like, you know, a headless chicken. Yeah. Uh, you may make, you have made some valid points, of course. I'm not arguing that, but you may have valid points, but I look at you in those angles. Okay, this guy has no direction because today you will say this about Lungu and and tomorrow we say this about it is tomorrow another person will come and you also say this and stuff like that so it was your consistency and also if you look at um, i'm going to talk about the issue of uh, uh, you know the, uh, the economy okay one of the things also we're not looking at is i'm not using this as an excuse but also we should look at the colopo situation right mm -hmm. i'm sure you are aware that there are countries in europe uh, that are in a recession and all those things and uh, for me i would love to hear you also look at all those angles and uh, i agree with your short-term measure the solar issues and the next years but also you should also look at the fact that we had presidents before within that kind of for example. Shall I ask you to conclude? You've given yeah. you enough time? Yeah, yeah. Let me just conclude. The, those presidents, why did they start those projects? And also for the future leaders, I feel that when you come into power, don't stop what another person started because you feel that you'll take credit. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Temple, I'll allow you to respond to uh, those comments. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll start with this first uh, 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 comment mm -hmm. regarding the uh, Facebook uh, social media. Post, social media. Yeah. I must mention that, um, you know, when you go on uh, Facebook and you search for the name Sean Temple, do you know how many pages you're going to find? Not less than 100 pages. Anderson. And uh, the majority of those pages are actually created by our political opponents. And uh, I don't have any control about the issues that they actually post on those pages. And um, we've filed multiple complaints to Zikta and this and that to say impersonation. But of course, they never take an action. So when you see, especially if it is a screenshot, if you see a screenshot of a post which sounds uh, very rudimentary, uh, 
advise you to actually take a lot of uh, uh, caution. And if it is not a screenshot, if you are actually on Facebook itself, if you see a post and it appears again very rudimentary, I would advise you to scroll down that particular page. And if you don't see any post where I was personally right, because I go right quite often, and uh, a live video, you can't post it somewhere else. It means that is an authentic page for Sean Tembo. So those are the precautions I would advise anybody uh, who sees any controversial post. If it is a screenshot, take it with a lot of uh, salt, a pinch of salt. If it is on Facebook itself, scroll down. If there is no live video, then forget about that page. It's a fake page. Uh, coming to his other submission to say, in terms of the economy, uh, uh, a lot of economies in Europe are in obsession. I think uh, 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 my friend Sherat should stick to uh, taking pictures and trying to analyze the economy because there is no connection between an economy in Europe which is in a recession and the Zandan economy uh, where President Hagaide Chirema has borrowed 200 billion in three years and there's nothing to point at. So my advice to my very good colleague here, Chara Tepeta, is that uh, uh, he should stick to photography and not dwell in issues uh, uh, that he has no idea in. I understand that uh, ever since he came from Brazil, uh, government has not paid his gratuity. And uh, I hope his uh, efforts to call into programs like this one and make disparaging remarks is not in an effort to try and get his gratuity from government. Thank you. He also highlighted you leaving alliances. Oh, so yeah, yeah. That, that makes you... you know. Actually, to the contrary, it makes me a very principled person. You know, it makes me a very principled person. Mm -hmm. um, because as a man, you must have boundaries. You must be able to say, uh, if you people cross this boundary, then I'm out. And for sure, if you, they cross the boundary, then you need to have the confidence and backbone to walk away. You, you need to have boundaries as a man. That is what defines a principled man. So, to the contrary, the fact that we are able to stand up to what we believe is wrong, uh, uh, in my view, uh, renders credence to the fact that we are a very principled uh, organization and uh, we are not shy to say what we see as being wrong. Under the patriotic front, we pointed out what we felt was wrong. And we did that with confidence, without any... Uh, uh, you know, without uh, uh, diluting our words. We said it in no uncertain terms. Uh, similarly, under the UPND, we are pointing out what we see as being wrong, and we are equally doing it in no uncertain terms. Let's get you more calls. It's 0974-877-0977-0955-877. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Pizzi. Good morning to you. What's your name? Uh, Larry. Oh, All right, Larry. We have President Sean Tembo in studio. What's your question or contribution? Yeah, my question or contribution is that uh, Mr. Sean Tembo, let us try to be honest, even as we speak and criticize the government. Because then look at the uh, number of things that Mr. this government has done and that you can do. They are massive. They are massive things that you can point at. Massive, which you are very much aware. You are saying Mr. Kain has borrowed, but there is nothing to show off. And yet you're seeing the recruitment, what is happening? You're constructing <laughs> on the road. <laughs> Uh -huh. Mr. Tembo, let's try to be realistic in to get to the right. Let's not confuse the Zambian people. We are all well aware. Let us make relevance even to get in the political space. Rather than deciding the government, condemning the government all the time. Mr. Sata provided relevance even as he was in politics. So let us, I think, take that part. I thank you so much. All right, thank you very much. Uh, your response to Larry. Well, <laughs> Yeah, some of these uh, uh, questions, uh, I, I find it boring to, to answer to them because they are self-explanatory. Uh, someone can't really argue that uh, the borrowing of 200 billion pacha over three years is justified by recruitment of teachers. Uh, you must understand that in a budget, there are two aspects to a budget. You've got the operational uh, part of the budget and you've got the developmental part of the budget. You understand? And uh, uh, we have other sources of income like taxation and electricity. And those sources of income are supposed to adequately address our operational needs in the budget. You understand? Uh, so when you talk about teacher recruitment or payment of salaries of teachers, that is the operational budget. 
when a government borrows, it is borrowing because it is funding what it is calling the developmental budget in the national budget, which is infrastructure, capital expenditure. So when someone borrows 200 billion kwacha, which is developmental finance, and there is no capital uh, projects to be seen, and the excuse is that it was used for recruitment of teachers, then that excuse does not hold water. Uh, and I must mention, uh, Peter, that when you look at the statistics of the number of civil servants, you realize that, uh, um, and, and you divide it per annum, uh, you will realize that uh, on average, between 2010 and 20, or rather 2011 and 2021, the patriotic fund government actually hired in excess, that is both under SATA and under ICL, they hired in excess of uh, 400,000 civil servants. So per annum, we are looking at about 40,000 civil servants. Uh, uh, so, so when the President Hanai Ndei Chirema hires, how many did he hire health workers? I don't know, 26,000. He hires this, he hires that. There's nothing out of the ordinary in that. It is just within the annual uh, targets of government in terms of hiring of civil servants that has been there uh, during the PF government, even during the MMD government. That is the annual target of government hiring civil servants. The only difference now is that uh, there is a lot of publicity that uh, the UPND government attaches to the hiring of civil servants so that they can be seen to be working. And the reason why the PF government and the MMD government never used to announce the hiring of civil servants, even though the numbers are comparable per annum, is because the PF government and the, U and the MMD government had the other tangible projects to point at, for them to be seen to be working. They had infrastructure to point at. So when they looked at the hiring of civil servants, they saw that as a petty activity which wasn't worth over-publicizing. So the fact that the UPND are over-publicizing a routine activity such as the hiring of civil servants actually is evidence of the dismal failure and dismal performance of the UPND government. Give us a call, it's 0974-870-877, Good morning. Uh, good morning, Kizzy. Morning to you, what's your name? Uh, Lazarus on the line. All right, Lazarus, we have uh, President Sean Chen in studio. Uh, uh, good morning, President Chen. Good morning, sir. Uh, how are you? Very well, how are you, yourself? Yeah, we are, we are trying, well, we are suffering. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, let me, let me just say, uh, President Short Tembo, you are saying things that they are, you are not sugarcoating anything. I think if uh, we are to call a state a state, this government has done in all aspects. If we look at what we were promised, especially us as you, because we voted in masses, because we, we were hearing what it, the president was telling us that you come and do. But if you check, almost each and every sector is in disarray. If you check his performance against his promises, he doesn't even come near to anything that was uh, was put forward to us. So I have one word for President H.H. Uh, we are not talking, we are sharing his scandal. And I promise him one thing. We'll talk in the ballot. We seem to be, you know, we, we seem to be docile, we seem to be not talking or maybe taking any action. We are hearing the cadres in the in, in form of the police. But what he has to understand is 2026 is not far from now. As you should also come out, come out in large numbers and take him out. I think this is my submission. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tembo. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh, I just wanted to uh, agree specifically on the submission that uh, uh, this government has failed across all aspects. You know, Peter, um, uh, you, you cannot have a perfect government. Of course, uh, each government that will come, not only in Zambia, but in other countries as well, uh, they will have this you know, weakness, they will have that weakness. But uh, the bottom line is that a government should be able to deliver on the majority 
of uh, what they commit to do. You understand? So the performance, if the performance is say uh, 80%, 90%, that is acceptable. We are not saying that the UPND should have been perfect. But when you look at this government, they have failed across the board. Across the board. Even basic, basic things like ensuring that athletes are paid, ensuring that before the Zambia national football team uh, goes into camp, they are paid their outstanding areas. They go into camp and they are complaining about their areas and you expect them to win games. You know, basic, basic things. Even in the people who went to the Olympics, ensuring that you pay them. We've got uh, uh, some Congo who went to compete in that Diamond League and he's complaining. He's writing long articles about it. He's not being paid. And you've got uh, people when a Kawana playing politics. No, some Congo is some Kongo. Just pay the guy. If the guy has been paid, you think he would be writing those long articles? This is a person who is also serving um, in the Zambia National Service. He's a disciplined officer. So why would we go about lying? He's not a politician. Why would he lie about not being paid? And you, Kawana, now, you want to politicize the issue. You want to challenge the guy because you know he cannot uh, have as much access to the media as you do have yourself as peers. Don't, let's not work like that. Let us do things in a honorable manner. So UPND has failed across the board, whether it is agriculture, energy, uh, capitalism, uh, uh, just mention it. They have failed 100%. There's no question about that. And come 2026, the Zambian people will do the honorable thing. Just like we have removed governments which we have not been happy about, there is no exception to this government. So President Agai Ndechidema should begin to pack his bags and his ministers should ensure that they do the correct things because whatever they are doing, whatever illegal things are being done now, those things will be investigated and the people responsible will be brought to book. Let's pick up more calls. It's 974 Good morning. Good. How are you doing? What's your name? My name is The brain Kiduwa, Manawasa, all those guys work in their school. Kaunda lays the foundation for us. Look up to now, we still have capital. Northern province there, we have the Kaunda Chimba Falls. Mbala, that is part of it, we have the Kalambo. What are we doing with those waters? So the problem we have, we don't feel we are just very good at building. Even you, if you were to be the president today, I can tell you, I can assure you. You will just continue eating what Kaunda left for us. That's the problem we have. Look at the young ones. Today I was watching one, I don't know uh, if it was one of the rural areas where they were the investing power, having a phone, and someone said, Ah, you know, it's more than 700. The, 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 the solution of Zambia is not outside Zambia. The solution is within Zambia. We had those young boys, jet What are we doing about that? Because it's just power they were generating. Why can't we call them? Can you give us your ideas? I will call the engineers. Those who are going to school. Those guys are born with that fine. What they need is someone who is able to say this is big, this is big. But because of that challenge we have, we don't want to see the Zambian innovating something. We don't want to see the Zambian to say, oh, it was made by this and this. We don't want to pay that Zambian that amount of money. That's the same thing which we did with five children. We killed our own. So let's do away with that jealous. And I wonder if for instance, this will be for us. So if you ever say, hey, forgive me, forgive me. Yeah, and you're, you're doing one and the same thing. So we, let's change, let's have now. We were laughing at the people of Southern Province. They could have said, okay, they're okay. But look, we have been hammered. The whole country now is suffering because of Southern Province. They have a lot of people who feel. We don't have power because of Southern Province. John, Thank I've given you enough time you to get your point across. Please Thank conclude. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Jumbo, please respond. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'd like to agree to a large extent to the submissions by Mr. John, uh, but I have a, a one point of departure uh, in the sense that you are saying we cannot blame the European government for the ongoing load shedding. I'd like to disagree strongly on that issue because. Uh, the UPND, if they were a competent government, of course they might not have prevented road sharing from happening. 
lot shedding would still have happened because of the issue of the drought, but it would not have been as severe as it is today. That is my submission. And the reasons are simple. The reason why we have this very protracted load shedding, uh, Peter, if you allow me uh, to explain, is because of two issues. You must remember that at the time that the PF were leaving office in 2021, we were generating about 3,100 megawatts of electricity. And uh, we, our total consumption at peak hour has averaged about 2,300 megawatts. Okay, so we had an excess of about 800 megawatts, okay, which we were able to export. Even under the PF, we used to export power, but we were exporting excess production. Okay, now the question is, why were we producing so much, uh, so much power under the PF? Uh, it is because most of the power was being produced by what are referred to as independent power producers. You know, producers such as Mamba Koreares, uh, producers such as Indora Energy, uh, producers such as Resepa Power. So there was a mushrooming of independent power producers under the PF because of the policies, number one, that the PF put in place, and number two, because they were able to pay these people on time. You must remember that these are private companies. So when they produce and feed into the grid, they need to be paid in a reasonable period of time. And uh, what the UPND did when they came into office in 2021 is, number one, they started reviewing all these independent power producers. And for one reason or the other, almost 80% of independent power producers, they kind of uh, uh, canceled the contracts. Okay, they canceled the contracts. And their belief was that these independent power producers, in their uh, uh, minds, they were affiliated to the PM. So they wanted to ensure that all possible sources of income for the PF are cut off. So they canceled the contracts with these independent power producers. And then our total production in terms of electricity as a nation dwindled from about uh, um, 3,100 to about uh, 2,400. So we had very little excess power. And then almost at the same time, we then uh, 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 began to have situations where the remaining independent power producers were not being paid. So I'm sure you remember when the Mamba Korea is had to totally shut down production because they were not being paid. So that further reduced our uh, total output of electricity. And then by the time the drought came, Peter, the bottom line is that we were, uh, we were having very little uh, power to export. And then when they signed the new export agreements, the second mistake that the UPND made is that those export agreements, they made them unconditional, meaning that power had to be exported whether you have excess or you don't. You understand? The contracts that were signed under the PF were conditional on having excess, meaning that the moment you have a problem at Kariba or anywhere else, you will then cut exports because you need to satisfy local consumption. But the contracts signed by the UPND were unconditional. That is the reason why, even now, in the middle of 96-hour road shedding, we are still exporting electricity because those contracts were unconditioned. Which, which, which contracts were terminated from the independent power producers that you've, you've highlighted right Several, now? several. So I, I can give you a list. Uh, if, if I check on my phone, I can give you a list. Please share with us that because we, we need to know which, which ones were A lot of them. Were terminated. A lot of them. Uh, more than more than uh, five independent power producers were terminated, including the simple power and in dollar energy. They were terminated. Okay. And it was only after road shedding came about that the government then started reaching out to these independent power producers and telling them to uh, sign new contracts. Uh, if you search, even if you search online, uh, search for dollar energy or the power, you will find that the government was announcing to say uh, dollar energy will begin to produce 40 megawatts. Uh, that was another announcement was made about four or five months ago in the middle of road shedding. Those people were on board a long time ago. They were forced to shut down because uh, Zesco could not buy their power and they couldn't sell it to anybody else. You understand? So 
That policy of targeting these independent power producers because they were perceiving them in a certain light is what killed the innovation. Right now, there's very little appetite in the private sector to engage in independent power production, except for those who feel affiliated to the UPND government. But in terms of an independent business person, because the risk is very high, you produce power, you are perceived to align to a certain party, and then they say, we can't buy your power. You understand? And then you are stuck with the power. What do you do with it? So that bad policy is what has actually made this road shedding to be as worse as it is. We are not saying that there would not have been road shedding. Road shedding would have been there, but it would have been reasonable road shedding. Maybe four hours, maybe six hours. But now we are having more than 90 hours of road shedding because of the poor policies of the UPND government. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.